The old year's gone. The new year's come. The old year was kind of a sticking your foot in the water to see how it feels and to see if this was going to work. That's kind of what it was. I didn't know who was going to show up the first Sunday. I thought it may be me and about four people. And look at what's happening. New people every week. Able to be involved in great ministries with folks. Uh, this past uh, Christmas season we raised, it was like $1,300 for Boys and Girls Club of Conway. God's doing some neat things with this group. So what does that mean? We're moving forward. We're casting a vision. We're trying to see where it is that God wants us to go. So this morning we're going to talk a little bit about direction and vision. I'm part of the uh, Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers generation. Y'all know who those people are. Uh, some of you are part of that generation, and some of you have children that were part of that generation. And there was a skit on Sesame Street, and you can tell how long ago this was because a parent would never do what this mother did with her little girl. The mother looks over to her daughter and says, I need you to go to the market for me. Do what? A mother is going to send her little girl to the market by herself? Really? We wouldn't dare do that nowadays. But the little girl said, what is it that you want me to pick up? And the mother said this, a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. Do you remember this skit? You don't remember this? <laughs> I told Heather I wish I had the ability to show it. I would just show this kid. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. So the little girl keeps saying over and over. So the little girl leaves her mom. Mom gives her some money. The little girl skips it down the sidewalk. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. Picks up a ball, bounces it. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. She goes in the store. She goes to pick up. She walks in, and the clerk says, what do you need? And the little girl goes, a uh, 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 loaf of... Uh, oh, yeah. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. So the clerk helps her. She pays for it. And the girl walks home. I think that some, in some ways the church is kind of like that little girl. We kind of know what our mission is. We've said it so long. And we say it to ourselves. And then when the rubber meets the road, it's time to actually do what we're supposed to do. We go, somebody says, what is the church about? And we go, um... <coughs> It, uh, it. So this morning, we're going to figure out what we're about and making sure that we're on the right track. And when someone says, what's on your list, we go, what? A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. If you have your Bible, let's look to John chapter 20. John the 20th chapter, and we'll begin with verse 21 this morning. Actually, we'll begin with verse 19. Um, Jesus is just after the resurrection, and he appears to his disciples, and he says this to them. John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. That evening on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them, Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see. And he showed them the wound in his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. And he spoke to them again and he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Jesus meets his disciples and his first words to them are peace be with you. Don't be afraid. You're seeing a man who you thought was gone. He's now in your midst. It's okay. Peace be with you. And then he says to them, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. The mother 
sent the daughter to the store on a mission. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. God sends us into the world on a mission. What is this group of bad sheep going to be about? When you try to develop a mission statement, or if someone asks you, why, why is your church different? Why do you worship where you worship? Is it because it's close to your house? At one time, people did that. They would worship whatever church was closest to them because they didn't have transportation, right? Now people will drive about anywhere to worship. We drive three and a half hours to worship. <laughs> Is it because of what you can wear? Maybe. Is it because of the minister? Part of it, I guess. Is it because of the room? You like having a room that has green and red hue in the lighting? <laughs> Is it because of the music? Is it because of the carpet? Probably not. Churches have split because of that, you know. <laughs> Is it because the preacher preaches short? Or because the preacher preaches long? Is it because the preacher looks good in skinny jeans? <laughs> or because the preacher does not? Is it because the pastor's a female? Is it because they're a male? You see what I'm getting at? Why do we do what we do? And when I thought about the name of this group, Bad Sheep, that was a launching point to, to really who we are and, and what our ministry is about. I think the church has taken a turn where we think the role of the church is something like this. Jesus met the disciples and he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. I think sometimes the church has changed it to this. To this. Jesus appears before the disciples and he said, you need to defend God and his word wherever you go. And if you see somebody doing something wrong, you need to blow their ears back. You understand? There's a lot of that that goes on in the name of Jesus. Our approach and my vision is that this is a place where we know who we are. Not just Mo Carpenter is Mo Carpenter. Or Gene Thayden is Gene Thayden. Or Christine McMahon is Christine McMahon. Or I want us to know deep within that we are sinners. We fail. We make mistakes. That's the bad news. We know this. When you look in the mirror, don't you know this? In your relationships, don't you know this? Heather and I have a good marriage. I really think we do. But we don't always see eye to eye. Believe it or not. <laughs> I am not the easiest person to live with. According to Heather, I am not the best driver <laughs> in the world. And it drives me crazy when she says something about my driving. <laughs> I'm confessing this in front of the whole group because I know she will not beat me here. <laughs> but when she says something about my driving, it drives me nuts. And there's something within me that immediately just right, it rears up. My whole countenance changes, and I just want to go, let me pay attention to what I'm doing and drive. Now, this is somebody that loves me, and she's telling me I need to slow down or, heaven forbid, use my blinker a little more, <laughs> not pull out in front of traffic, those kind of things, you know. And it gets all up in me. And I know she loves me. And when she points out my bad spots, I just want to fight. <laughs> How do you think non-believers feel when you don't have a relationship with them and you point out their bad things? It's worse. <laughs> 
it doesn't make them want to run to Jesus. It doesn't make them want to say, this person is so loving and accepting, I can't wait to spend time with them. They're just so great. What do they say? Lord, have mercy. Here comes Mo again. <laughs> What makes us different? What makes us different? Why here and not First Baptist? Why here and not First Methodist? Why here and not Apache? Why, why here and not at the Pentecostal church? Why here? What makes it different? When you fashion a mission statement, you have to know what you're about. And for me, the first thing that comes to mind is this is a place where forgiveness is fleshed out and lived out every Sunday. This is a place where we are forgiven. When we come in, we know we're sinners. That's the bad news. But all the good news of the gospel is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is a place where we don't think we're better than anybody else. We don't think we deserve grace. In fact, we know we don't. This is a place where forgiveness is fleshed out. Now this isn't just my idea. What is your idea of this place? This is your church. This isn't the church of Richard. This isn't the church of Heather. This is the place where you worship. Why do you come here. What does God do in that process that brings you back? And as we are becoming more structured and as we do things like make a mission statement, do bulletin jackets that say this is what we believe and this is how we're going to live in the world and those kind of things. This is important. It needs to be your vision too. Why here? Guess what? It's your turn to talk. Because I haven't had my coffee. <laughs> Bean. Why here? What is it about this place that makes you comfortable saying to your friend, I want you to come worship with me? What is it? Come on. Love. Love. Got it. Love. No judgment. From my perspective, it's you. Well, you take today's world and you read the Bible and you blend that with this. And you tell us a story that I carry with me now. So from my perspective, it's your forgiveness, your kindness, your love for each one of us. And you just have made a world of difference. And I appreciate that a lot. Uh, so, in what you said, trying to, I can't drive, but I can preach. <laughs> <laughs> Taking that, what you're saying is, there's truth in God's Word, we get that. There's struggle in the world, we know that. And we have to see that God's Word and the world can go together, and we can find hope and keep moving. That, that's... There's another way to phrase that, but breaking it down as easy as I can. Okay, love, forgiveness. Yes? I almost feel like we're not bad sheep, we're lost sheep. Ah, lost sheep. Yep. You came back. Mm. <laughs> I appreciate that. This wasn't the purpose of it. <laughs> <laughs> we may not post the video this week. Um, Richard? Yes? I was going to say, I don't feel like I'm being preached at. Good. I feel like I'm being talked. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's good. That's, that's what we want. There's a lack of pretense on your part. I mean, you're not somebody standing up there holding you in the narrow. And that means a lot to me. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, I don't change my voice. Almighty God. <laughs> <laughs> that's not authentic. And I'd rather be authentic. Uh, thank you. Yes? What? Is it home? Mm -hmm. We want it to be home. You know, we a big part of 
the Lord's Prayer, the, the model prayer is, you know, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us, um, and lead us not into temptation, uh, but deliver us from evil for thine is kingdom and the power of the glory forever and ever. Amen. But we talk about on earth as it is in heaven, right? So what we would like for earth to be is what? As heavenly as possible. And I'd like to find a way to make this a place where it's comfortable. I read my favorite author, uh, Frederick Beekner, talks about people asking him about the church and, and why it doesn't seem to be making a difference in the world. And he said, the reason is because people aren't authentic in church. They come in and they have masks on and they don't want to say what they're struggling with. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. Are you have a good one? Oh, everything's great. How's your kids? Oh, they're wonderful. They're all like students. And how's your marriage? Oh, we love each other and we sing and we dance and everything's wonderful. But it's not the way it is all the time, is it? And he said that AA meetings are more honest than the church. Because in an AA meeting, you stand up and say what? Hi, my name is Richard. And this is where I struggle. And I need you. And this group is a place that will be safe enough for you to say, Hi, my name is so and so. And my marriage is going to hell. <laughs> Hi, my name is so and so. I have a kid that I can't do a thing with. Hi, my name is so and so. And I don't feel like I'm loved. For church to be what we're called to be, we have to move in that direction. I'm not saying we're going to have public confession every week. Don't get, Mary Jo, don't, don't get worried. <laughs> Walk in next week and the spotlight goes, bam! <laughs> What's up with you this week? <laughs> but it's a place where we can understand, hey, just speaking broadly, so-and-so is having a problem with addiction. We have somebody else in our congregation that has battled that before. Maybe we can pair them together and they can help each other. Yeah, you know, all those things. Uh, small groups, uh, opportunities to, to pray together, uh, to be authentic, to use our resources to make a difference in the world. There's a whole lot of things that God's working and moving and dealing with us. Uh, anything else? Anything that you want this to become? That it's not yet. I'm gonna throw this out there. We're gonna move. Full, we're gonna be full time pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's full time, will you come full time? Yes. Okay. I figure if you're gonna stick with once every couple of weeks, you probably come every week. We're moving towards that. It's gonna happen sooner than later. Good. Good. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Anything else you wanted to become? If we did some things on a Saturday evening, if we came into town and we had a small group that would meet, we would divide the group into A, B, C, or D, or however we want to do it, do a small group and meet. But some of y'all be interested in doing that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, some of you may poo-poo this idea, but some people enjoy smoking cigars. I haven't thought about having a Bad Sheep Cigar Club <laughs> where, where the guys or the gals <laughs> could sit, relax, talk, share what's going on in their lives. We're not trying to make you smoke if you don't. <laughs> okay. Is that something that you'd be interested in? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they used to when they quit. <laughs> It gives me great joy to post my cigar pictures knowing that when they see them, they go, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go? <laughs> Anybody else? Anything else that you see that, that God's been dealing with you or are working in your life? We, this is not just the Richard Show, okay? We want it to be something that's going to foster growth in a spiritual environment. You can be who you are. We're not wanting to do it like everybody else does. 
But we're not wanting to become a cult either. We're going to be centered on God's Word. We're going to preach God's Word. It's going to be relevant. We're going to pray. We're going to do pastoral care things. But we want to be creative in the way we live that out. We want to be creative. Anything else? Awesome. No dancing. I don't dance. <laughs> if any of you are led to do a Christian dance team, let me know. <laughs> Susan, you can lead that. <laughs> the, the big thing um, as we look at who we are and who God wants us to be and why God has called us back here to do this when I left I thought it was over and now I'm back and it's wide open a clean pattern you ever have one of those etch sketches kind of do your thing and then you mess it up you go <laughs> when you start over from a ministry perspective I got to do this <laughs> that's exciting let's do it together this song believe it or not I was raised up in the Baptist church half the time and the Pentecostal church the other half the time and this is a song that my grandparents used to sing in their Pentecostal church do you know this song send the light do you know it? I'm going to sing the first verse real quick so you get the tune, okay? There's a call come ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. You got it? Let's sing. Send the light. Stand up. Let's sing together. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, and the gold offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Now i got to tell you this. If y'all sang like that in my grandparents' Pentecostal church, <laughs> they would send you out. <laughs> they had hymnals back then, and they would tap them on their legs and keep the tune. Can you do better? <laughs> Let us pray that grace may everywhere be bound. Send the light, send the light, and the Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light. wonderful time of the, the evening the sun was going down and the clouds were beautiful and we turned around and we were walking back and they were the sky was full of black clouds and right in the middle of one was one pink one all black one pink that cloud was a bad sheep <laughs> it stood out we walked down the beach. There were seagulls. A bunch of them were white as can be. 
There was one fat, ugly, dirty, haggardy looking seagull. A bad sheep. They're everywhere. When you see one, a friend, say, come on over. We've got people just like you that worship with us. We'd love to have you. Thank you for being here. Let's bow for the benediction. Father, dismiss us from this place with your love and with your mercy. Thank you for what you're doing here. Continue to illuminate us. Continue to guide us. And use us as you want us to be used. Help this to be a place where people come. But, and above all, may it be a place where your name is lifted up. May this be a place where the broken are uplifted. May this be a place where the light is sent forth. May this be a place that brings you honor and brings you glory. It's in the name of Jesus, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. One quick question, business note. How many of you think that I should drive home today or Heather should drive home today? <laughs> if you think I should drive home today, raise your hand. If you think Heather should drive home today, raise your hand. Thank you. RC. Never mind. <laughs>